Hi everyone, I'm Kat, co-founder at Volterra, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a double-sided circuit board with the V1. So step one is to upload your design files. You can use any software you're comfortable with, just upload them into Gerber format. You'll see the toolpath is already calculated when you upload your design. So next, clamp down the sacrificial layer and the board. I'm using an FR1 board because we're going to be drilling into it. So once that's secured, snap in the proximity probe. It will be used to generate an accurate map of the surface. So once that's done, go ahead, snap in the drill head and fire it up. Now the board has been mapped in XYZ space, so the drill knows exactly where to go. If you're going to be using different hole sizes, the software will prompt you to change the drill bit after the current hole size. All right, let's print some traces. So swap out the drill head for the ink dispenser, let it calibrate, and begin laying down conductive ink. If you find a mistake on the board, you could easily reprint it using selective printing. This is a great feature for design modification and rework. Okay, so now it's time to cure this board. Simply remove the sacrificial layer, flip the board, and rest it on the baking ledges of the clamps. Curing takes about 40 minutes and you're going to want to let it cool down after, so I'm going to go grab a snack and I'll be right back. Okay, so that looks good to me. Now I'm just going to flip the board back over so that we can print and cure the bottom side. Okay, so our traces are printed and cured onto both sides. Now I'm just going to go pop in some rivets and use the riveting tool to secure them into place. Okay, with that done, we can clamp the board back onto the printer and go ahead, snap in the solder paste dispenser so that we can get some solder onto these pads. And with that done, I'm just going to pop some components onto here and watch them reflow directly onto the heated bed. This board does have a few through hole components, so I'm going to go solder them using the provided solder wire. I'm using plenty of flux and my iron is set to 200 degrees Celsius because the traces are heat sensitive. Okay, so let's see if my punk console works. Okay, so this is an example of a very simple circuit. Thank you all so much for watching. We can't wait to see what you create with your V1.